Welcome back to Fico's Bowl for the conclusion of the Pro Series Teams Final. We're picking up the action in the sixth box of the match where Dave Richards is facing Gary Santora. They're the leadoff bowlers for Mark Gregory and Jim Ayotte's teams. Dave Richards dropping three on the left side. And Gary Santora with a strike in the sixth. Let's have a look at the replay on this strike by Gary. Kind of a medium light hit on the uh, on the one three side, and he gets a lot of mix on the left side to take out the uh, the four pin going down. Meanwhile, Dave Richards will be open in the sixth. He'll take a nine. Dave has 77 through six. Jeff Walsh and Chris Winniar has come back up. At this point, you'll recall that it is a 20, well, it's 20, was a 25 pin lead for uh, Jim Ayotte's team. And then Gary Santora just put a, um, a strike on the uh, square that he had in the fifth. And Jeff Walsh missing an opportunity to make up a little bit of that difference with the five pin. But yeah, Mark Ritchie says forget about it. And that's true, you can't be can't worry about a ball you've already thrown. So it's both guys are gonna be open here in the uh, fifth. Jeff will have a nine and Chris is gonna take a ten. Jeff Walsh with another nice ball in the 1-3 pocket. Another 9 drop. He's got the 2 pin. With a little wood that might actually help him a little bit. Although it's, it's a little bit far away from the 2. And Chris Winnier is with a, with a nice break. Leaving the 1-3. Oh, and Jeff Walsh just barely clips that 2 pin. Looks good on the scoreboard. It's fair in the Sixth for Jeff. Chris Winniars just goes by that spare leave, so he'll have another open in the sixth. That'll be a nine. So Chris has 59 through six. So Nick Norcross. And John Starner will come back up. Nick goes to the left quarter, but gets a fairly decent break out of it with a uh, seven drop, leaving the one, three, and eight. John Starner hits the one, two pocket, and has he's got the three, five, six, ten remaining. Slightly better leave than than Nick's, because Nick is going to have a have to make a good shot to carry that 8 pin. Either get the head pin to come off the wall or get hit fairly full on one side or the other. And that's a great way to do it. Nick hits very high on the left side of the head pin. The head pin takes out the 2. And the ball took out the 8. And there's a spare by John Starner. Not exactly a classic conversion, but uh, it, it went down. Let's take a, a look at it on replay. He hits a little bit fuller than he wanted to on the three, but the six comes off the wall into the five, which then drops onto the six and spins it over to take out the ten. So John Starner matching the spare by Nick Norcross. And Nick has six, leaving the three, six, eight, and ten with several pieces of wood and John Starner also with a six drop but he's got a split and Nick Norcross with an excellent shot there he really had to hit that that wood 
high in order to push everything back into the 10. You can see the wood spins into the 3, into the 6, into the 10, and he's got the spare. That was not an easy shot. And John Starner also with a spare. Let's have a look at, at this one. 2, 4, 6, 10, piece of wood. Two pin comes off the wall. It hits that piece of wood and then goes into the four and off the wall and rebounds to take out the 6-10. So two marks for each bowler. And that brings up Peter Pereira and Dave Chesterco. Pereira punches out the half Worcester on the left side. Dave Chesterco with a five drop leaving uh, in ten pins that's called a Greek church four six seven nine ten and a beautiful shot by Peter Pereira converting that half Worcester you can see pretty light on the head pin and it's actually the six pin that comes off the sidewall and spins around takes out the seven and the four and finally the five And Dave trying to convert that Greek church. This takes out the 4-7, so he'll have the 6-9-10 triangle left for a 10 box. And it's a 10. Nice pinning by Dave. So let's see what Peter Pereira can put on the spare. Take advantage of that half Worcester conversion. And goes light on the left quarter, taking out five. Meanwhile, Dave Chesterco throws a little bit of a pitch out as well. Also dropping five, leaving the one, two, three, five, seven. A makeable shot, but not an easy one. And Pete goes by the head pin, taking out the eight, so he's still got four pins remaining. And Dave also goes by the head pin, so they'll, they'll both be open in the sixth. Peter Pereira with a nice out for a ten, taking that one, three, five, nine solid on the left side of the head pin. And Dave Chestercove will take an eight box. Pereira has 62 through 6, and Chester Cove 63. So now Mark Gregory and Jim Ayotte come back up for their 5th and 6th. Mark Gregory with an 8 drop. He's got 5, 10, and a piece of wood pretty much perpendicular to the lane in front of the 5, and he's probably going to have to go well to the left. And that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to really get, just get way out on the end of that wood and spin, kick the five over into the ten. Yeah, and that's why, because if he didn't go well to the left, he wasn't going to get the ten. So it's a nine box for Mark Gregory and an eight for Jim Ayotte in the fifth. Mark Gregory with another ball on the head pin, and he's got an 8 drop again. He's got the 2-7 with a piece of wood in front of the 7. And Jim Ayotte with a 7 drop, leaving the 1-2-4. A couple of pretty makeable spares here. And Mark Gregory makes it. He, uh, you'll see that he doesn't even uh, doesn't need that wood in front of the seven pin. He hits the two and it comes off the wall and takes the seven directly. That's a spare in the six for Mark Gregory. Jim Ayotte converts the one, two, four, so matching spares. They switch lanes again. Dave Richards comes back to lane 13 and Gary Santora lane 14. Gary bowls out of Colonial 
Lanes in Worcester, and also Mohegan in Webster, Massachusetts. And he also bowls in the Sunday Pro League at Park Place in Windham, New Hampshire. And that's going to be a nine drop for Dave Richards. Meanwhile, Gary has an eight, and he's got the five nine with a piece of wood that's rolling in front of them. Hasn't quite stopped rolling. Doesn't he doesn't want it to stay in front of there? He'd like it to go away, but it doesn't look like like it's it's going to. It's tricky. And Gary goes by it altogether. He he was probably trying to avoid the wood and just catch the left side of the five pin. And Dave Richards also tugs his spare attempt a little bit. So they're both going to be open in the seventh. And well, you can see why Gary didn't like that wood. It was just not a good piece of wood. It'll be a nine box for Gary and a ten for Cookie as they move into the eighth box. Gary hits the head pin again. Gets seven but leaves a split two four six. Dave Richards also with seven and a split. He's got six, seven, and nine with a couple pieces of wood in front of the six and nine that that uh, if he can go pretty high he might have a shot at, at it. Well, good try but just couldn't get anything to go over and get the seven. Might have needed to go a little bit higher. Or he might have been trying to get the ball to come out of the pit and get the seven. In any case, it will be matching tens. Gary Santora has won 15 after eight and Dave Richards with 97. Chris Winniars comes up on num lane 14. And he drops five. Jeff Walsh with an eight drop. Chris with the Kaliri, and he makes a nice try on that Kaliri uh, right side, but doesn't quite get the 10 pin. <laughs> Jeff Walsh also hits the object pin, but a little bit too light on the 3 and kicks it in front of the 5. It'll be a 10 for Chris Winniars, and a 9 for Jeff Walsh. Jeff has 73 through 7, and Chris has 69. Both guys are going to be looking to try and finish strong and is it, that goes for a strike for Chris Winniars. Let's take a look at the replay in slow-mo. He hits solid in that one three pocket. Five and eight are the last to go. So that's a strike in the eighth for Chris. And Jeff Walsh has got eight. Leaving the 4-7 with some wood. Looking for a mark to match the, the one by Chris. And he's got the spare in the 8th. So that'll give him his team a chance to cut the lead. John Starner and Nick Norcross back up. John with a six drop and Nick Norcross with a strike. Let's have a look at this. Nick hits very full in the one two pocket and the two pin comes to the sidewall and then pushes that four pin over. Uh, it rolls across into the three six. So that's a very timely strike by Nick Norcross in the seven. Let's see what John Starner can do with. Wow, that's a great bid on that one two. 8, 9. He almost converted, but the head pin just came off the wall and went behind that 9 pin instead of taking it down. So, Mark Gregory's team is starting to close the gap as uh, Jeff Walsh and Nick Norcross have had some marks. See what Nick can do with that strike. Well, he misses the head pin by quite a bit, but he drops 7 and he leaves a 1, 2, 5. That's kind of a tricky leave. John Starner with the spread eagle. 
and John punches out the six pin. Let's see what Nick can do with this little. Yes, very nice shot right there by Nick Norcross. This is a difficult spare, but he hits very full on the head pin, and you can see the ball takes all three pins. One, two, five. Great shot by Nick Norcross in the eighth. That's going to tighten things up even more. Uh, it's just a six for John Starner. So that's going to bring up Dave Chestercove and Pete Pereira once again. And Dave with a very light head pin hit leaves the three, four, five, six, ten. And Peter going out on the, the right quarter, but he gets eight. And leaves the one and seven with a piece of wood to the left of the head pin. And is it going to get it? Yes. Take a look at this shot by Peter Pereira for the spare. The ball, actually no, the head pin hits that wood and it comes off the left side wall and then goes all the way over to the right and rolls back across to get the seven. That's a, uh, a very timely spare by Pete Pereira. And my math isn't very good, but at this point, I think Gregory's team has taken the lead. I'd have to stop and calculate it, but they've got the marks by Norcross, two marks by Norcross, one by Walsh, and then... So this match is anyone's game. Dave Chester Cove with a six drop. And Peter Pereira with eight, leaving the one and six with a piece of wood roughly in where the five pin used to be basically perpendicular to the lane facing the six and a nice bid by Dave, Dave Chesterco but he's just a little bit high on the head pin and he doesn't get the ten and Pete Pereira with the spare probably not exactly what he had in mind but he just clips the head pin and the ball goes through and catches that wood behind the head pin and spins it into the six so that's a couple of clutch spares by Pete Pereira. Spread eagle for Jim Ayotte. Mark Gregory tugs the ball just a little bit, just putting four on that spare in the sixth. And nice bid by Jim Ayotte on the spread eagle. He just missed the, uh, the two pin by a fraction of an inch. Mark Gregory with a nice try on that, uh, that, that four drop. He got everything but the five pin. Jim Ayotte will record an eight box in the seventh, 92 through seven. Mark Gregory with a nine. He's got 88 through seven. So Jim Ayotte drops eight. Mark Gregory firing in the eight. And he has got a nine drop, leaving just the seven pin. Piece of wood at an angle. Um, couple pieces of wood. Jim Ayotte goes by that. He was trying to kick that three over into the seven. Let's see if Mark Gregory can get that seven pin. And he's got it. So that's going to mean, let me just check on the on the score at the end of eight as uh, Jim Ayotte records an, records an eight box. 
Right now, Mark Gregory's team leads by one pin, 473 to 472, and they have three spares to fill as against one, um, just one mark for uh, Jim Ayotte's team, that being the strike by Chris Winniards. So, those spare fills are undoubtedly going to give Mark Gregory's team the lead, and that means that Jim Ayotte's team is going to, they have, uh, after leading most of the match, they've fallen behind, and they're going to need a big finish in order to win. Gary Santora with five, as, uh, as did Dave Richards. Dave doesn't catch the spare. And Gary Santora with a spare. He uh, misses the head pin, but takes advantage of some wood behind it, as you will see. A lot of lumber there. And it spins around and comes back and, and gets the head pin. So that's, uh, that's a very timely spare for Gary. Meanwhile, uh, Dave Richards records a 7 in the ninth. He has 1 0 four through nine. Gary with 125 plus a ball. And Cookie with an eight drop in the tenth. He leaves the five ten. See what Gary can do with that spare. Gary has got eight as well. 133 through nine. But more important, he's got another spare leave. And Dave Richards doesn't catch the five pin. Gary Santor with a spare in the tenth. Wow, and that pin went in front of the ten. So that's a nine box for uh, Dave Richards. And here comes the fill ball by Gary Santora. It's going to be six. So that is a 149 game for Gary Santora. And a couple of Bears at the end that really tighten it up. Jeff Walsh back up on lane 14 and Chris Winniard on lane 13 filling the strike. And of course, keep in mind that Nick Norcross, Peter Pereira, and Mark Gregory are all working on spares for, uh, for Gregory's team. And Jeff Walsh misses the nine pin. I think he was probably trying to go well out to the left end and drive that wood back into the nine. He didn't like that wood out front and naturally as when it's a third ball it's much easier and it just goes off the wall and makes the ten. So uh, it's a ten for Jeff Walsh and a nine for Chris Winniars as they go into the tenth. Jeff with a four drop. Winniars. Chris with seven. Chris has the two, seven, and eight with some couple pieces of wood that look pretty good. Like he can just probably sweep that wood back into the corner, take out the two, seven, and eight. And he hits it low, doesn't. Is it going to go? Yes, it does. That was uh, not exactly the way Chris had probably envisioned it, but um, it, it went. And as you can see, he hits too low. He goes almost out on the end of that wood. He wanted to go much higher. And however, he's still able to get the spare. Just enough momentum carried over into the corner to, uh, to get it. So he's got a spare in the tent. That gives him 107 with one ball remaining. And he adds an eight drop for 115. So, so now Nick Norcross, Pete Pereira, and Mark Gregory all have spares to fill. Nick with eight. That gives him 113 through eight. John Starner on lane 13. John has got an eight drop as well, the four eight. And Nick has the one three. Nick with the spare. John Starner really needs to match that spare. And 
and he doesn't quite do it. He just slides by the four, taking only the eight, so it will be an open box for John Starner in the ninth. He will have a nine. So Nick Norcross will will fill the spare with six. That gives him 129 through nine. John Starner misses the head pin, gets five. Makeable spare, one, two, seven, eight, ten with some wood. And Nick Norcross punches the two pin off the four, so he's still got three, three pins remaining. Important to get every stick in such a tight match. John Starner misses the head pin, just taking the ten. Nick Norcross will take a seven. That gives him a 136 game. Good bowling by Nick. John Starner hits the head pin, but that's all he gets. So it's a seven for him as well. And he has a, a 113 game. Peter Pereira comes up working on that spare that he had in the eighth against Dave Chesterkov. And he drops eight, leaving the 5-9. Piece of wood rolling back in front. And it's not going to turn. That's going to be a tough spare for Peter. He's going to have to hit it really high and drive that wood back into the 5-9. Meanwhile, Dave Chesterkove with a 3-4-6-10. Nope. Good try by Peter, but he didn't quite go high enough to push it back, and it ended up going to the right of the 5-9. And nice try by Dave Chesterkove, but he just doesn't quite hit the three. So both guys will be open in the ninth. And it's a nine for Peter. And a nine for Dave as well. Peter Pereira with an 8 drop in the 10th, leaving the 4-7 with a pretty good piece of wood. Dave Chesterkove with a 5 drop, leaving the Kaliri, once again, the 1-2-4-7-9, difficult spare. And Peter goes right at the 4-7 spare in the 10th. Dave Chesterkove drills the head pin straight back. So he'll be open in the 10th. Try to fill out as many as he can. Because with the fill ball, Peter Pereira is going to... That's an 8 for Dave Chesterkove. Peter Pereira is giving his team a... Uh, Enough of a lead that with Mark Gregory working on that spare and Peter adds five. He's got a 122 game. So Jim Ayot is going to need a big finish in order to catch Mark Gregory. Mark with an eight drop on his spare in the eighth. And Jim Ayotte pounds a head pin, but leaves 2 3 6 10, goes through the middle. And Mark Gregory with a opportunity to make a spare that would just about put the match away. And he's got it. And Jim Ayotte. Not able to make, that was a really difficult spare. Really had to uh, either cut it extremely thin or get something to come off the wall. And that's really not a spare you're going to make very often. It'll be a 10 box for Jim Ayotte. So. Looks as though 
If Mark puts a good fill on this bear, that's probably going to put the match away. And there is a strike by Mark Gregory. Let's take a look at it on replay. Great ball, high flush in the 1-3 pocket. And 10 pins hit the deck. And that's going to do it. That is going to seal the victory for Mark Gregory's team in this Pro Series team event over Jim Ayotte's team. We'll show you the scoreboard when, when they're finished. Uh, Mark still has to fill the strike. Jim will take an 8 for a 118, and that's a 593 total for his team. Mark Gregory throws a pitch out, but it doesn't matter since they've already won. <coughs> he will just throw one more ball to fill out that strike. So it's a 5 fill and a 141 game for Mark Gregory. So the team captained by Dave Richards are the Pro Series champions for, for this team event. And let's take a look at the scoreboard. The team, uh, I referred to them as Mark Gregory's team because he's the anchor bowler, but the captain is actually Dave Richards. And his team records a 622 to 593 win over Jim Ayotte's team. And Dave Richards is the captain of the winning team in this Pro Series team event here at FICO's.